Hey everyone, my name is David East. And I'm Stefan Yanyarella. And today we're going to teach you everything that you need to know to get started with Firebase and the web. Today, we're going to cover creating a project, project initialization, authentication for users, fire store to store data, securing data with security rules, and deploy the site to Firebase hosting. Before you can get started, Node.js and Java need to be downloaded and configured. <laughs> but don't worry, we won't be writing any Java today. There are a lot of things to get covered, so let's get started. The first thing you need to do is create a project in the Firebase console. Make sure you use a name you like, because that's what Firebase hosting then uses for your site. We can also configure Google Analytics to obtain more information about page views and other important things. Next, we need to create a Firebase app. An app needs a name. I usually use the default, but you can use whatever you want. This app contains a configuration that the Firebase SDK needs to connect your website with Firebase. Now that we've completed these steps, we can finally write some code. I'm going to start with an empty project on my computer with NPM. First, you have to download the Firebase CLI. And then next, you have to authenticate with Firebase. Generally, people download the Firebase CLI globally. But here, I'm going to download the CLI as a dev dependency and use MPX. Now we need to log in with Firebase. This process will open up a browser for authentication. But bro tip, you can use Firebase login dash dash add and Firebase login dash dash use to use multiple accounts. Now I'm going to start a project with the command Firebase init hosting. But I'm going to use a new feature that requires an experimental command, Firebase experiments colon enable web frameworks. And you'll see just why in just a moment. I'm going to type the Firebase init hosting command to start a project. And this command has so many features. So I'm going to write the name of my project. And I'm going to set my project to a path called hosting. This is just where all the files are going to be stored. And now I can create a project with several frameworks. I want a project with Vite and TypeScript because Vite is very easy and it's flexible to use with any framework. When it asks for what backend server you might need, uh, we won't need one in this case, so we can skip past that. And I'm also going to choose no for GitHub deployments because we cover that totally in a whole other video. So see the description for more. And we already have a project ready, so I'm going to open it up in VS Code. Now in VS Code, I'm going to install the Firebase SDK. Make sure you are in the hosting directory during the installation. I'm going to import the SDK. The Firebase SDK is organized with sub-packages. The first one we use is Firebase app to connect your project to Firebase. In general, we have to use initialize app, function with its configuration. but when you're using the experimental feature we mentioned a while ago, you don't need the configuration or this import. So let's start with authentication. Like most Firebase services, authentication has a getter function. You'll see this pattern uh, in most of our packages. So let's start by logging in a user. So this package has functions for logging in with multiple providers. For example, if you want to sign in with Google, you can use a function sign in with redirect that works with social providers. And each social provider has its own social provider function in the SDK. So how do we know if the user is logged in to your app? Well, we can use the onAuth state changed function. This function will be called every time the authentication state changes. If the user does not exist, the variable will be null. But before we can run this code, we have to enable the provider in the console. And this is required for each provider you want to use. So now when we run this code, we can see that our user is in the dev tools. But most importantly, let's take a look at the UID property. This property is very important because it is a unique identifier. And don't worry if other people can see these identifiers, because security in your database comes from security rules. Also, we can use this ID to structure data in a database like Firestore. Firestore is a NoSQL document database. This means that the database is organized with a hierarchy. You can structure your data in collections of documents, but powers comes from the hierarchy. Instead of creating two separate collections, you can use the hierarchy to find expenses much easier. You don't need a query. 
only the document path. If you need to do a query, no problem, because Firestore has many functions for doing queries. We even recently released operators like OR, AND, CAN, and many more. Before using Firestore, we need to create it in the console. And now we are ready to use Firestore. As you saw with authentication package, Firestore has a getter function. We can use this function to create a Firestore instance. Now, to get the data, we have to create a reference to a collection or document. Let's say we want to get the spending data for a user. Before, we need to get the user ID. And as we saw before, we can use the on auth state change function and use the ID to create the document path we want. Then, to get real time data, we can use the on snapshot function. This function runs in real time whenever the data changes. You will notice that this function gives you a snapshot that contains the data we have saved and other important functions and metadata. For example, we can use a snapshot to iterate over the documents. We can then sync this data with the UI. And also, we can do other things, like see the types of changes that occur. Now that we have the data, we can sync this data with the user interface. I'm going to create a simple list and add a list item for each expense and display the name and the cost. I'm going to enter data in the database with user ID. I'm going to create a collection of users with UIDs. And then, based on the hierarchy, you create a subcollection of expenses and create a sample expense document. Now, in the browser, you can see the data of this user. But this query retrieves every single document underneath the collection. And we're not doing anything like restricting how many documents come back or doing any filtering. So we can limit the results of the documents by using query functions. So to create a query with Firestore, we're going to import the other query functions. And typically, you're going to use query and where. And in this case, I created a query that retrieves expenses below $10, where cost is an attribute of each expense. And there are many things to learn about querying with Firestore. And for more information, please see the description below because we have so many videos on this topic. But this is just for retrieving data. If we want to update this data, we can also use updating functions. So to update this data, we have a whole set of functions to use. And certain functions are for documents, and certain others are for collections. So for example, let's say I want to create a document. I can write a new path to create this document. And then I can use the set doc function with the data. But there is something you need to know. The set doc function is destructive. This means that with each update, it will replace the data that was there before. So if you want to only update, you can use the update doc function that just updates with any of the new fields. However, update doc is only for documents that already exist. So we can use my favorite trick, which is calling set doc with the merge true setting. And this, I tend to think, works for most cases. In this case, we can create a new document with a name. But most of the time, we want a generated ID. And for that, we can use the add doc function. This function adds a document to the collection with a generated ID. We have already seen how to authenticate users and update data, but the database is not secure yet. To secure it, we have to write security rules in the security rules console. In Firebase, security rules are their own language, but they're easy to learn, and there are many tools to help you build them. Think of security rules like a firewall. The wall is to match a route and enforce a rule. We can enforce a rule with a loud statement. This instruction can enforce a rule for read and write operations. But this rule is not practical. We can match more documents to a wildcard and write the entire rule with one declaration. But how we can secure all documents with a single rule? Well, security rules have a lot of variables to use. As a request variable, this variable contains information about the document and the user. We can use the user to make sure that only this user can access his data. We can test our rules here in the console. I'm going to write the path of a fake user. When I click Run, I see an error. 
This error is because there is no authenticated user and we need to write some code to verify. Now, there is no error. And we know that an unauthenticated request cannot access this data. To verify that an authenticated user can access your data, we can try a fake ID. This is like a unit test. And you should know that we have a package for unit testing. There are many things we can do with security rules. So check the description for more videos. So we are finally ready to deploy the site. And since we're using the experiment, it's very easy to deploy. The CLI automatically detects the framework, runs the build, and deploys the site all in one command. So we just write Firebase deploy, and CLI handles everything for us. And now we have a site with a web.app domain. That's all you need to know to get started with Firebase on the web. This was just an introduction. So check out the links below for more detailed information. And tell us what else you want to learn about Firebase and the web. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And that's all for this time. And we will see you on the next one.